Hello, Bob here, and uh, this is uh, February the 13th, uh, 2013, and uh, we're going to uh, explain the rotating system, and it's how I build them and the different components that are in it. Of course, first we have the base here, and that it all sits on. These towers are just for different applications. Uh, in this particular, I use them for this is the uh, power input on this one, and it's just a copper wire with the insulation still on it, and it's just set up. And the reason it's made this long. And uh, so it gives me some room to adjust it because on this style, and I'll show you in a second here, that it has to fit up fairly close. And there's an in, um, there's two neoprene rings around it, so it has to be pretty, it's tricky to set up. But what I wanted to basically, when you build one of these little things they have to rotate very very easy as you can see this is just spinning along now just flipping it with your hand or fingers you have to be able that it should rotate at least one minute or longer up to a minute and 10 seconds or so and another thing that's critical with using the rotating system to get the maximum use out of it. If you're uh, like, I use it for uh, when I for my ion thrusters. That there's such a, a little thrust level involved, and that's the reason why the spinning has to be so good on it, and very little drag. And another thing is that you have to be level get it as level as you possibly can and I carry I have a little level that I and I use I just used uh, paper different thicknesses of paper cut and I put them under I just I just I just literally just literally put them under the pads where I need to and I'll show you that's just what I use I just use a these are just paper I, I cut out a bunch of them and because uh, uh, you'll find that uh, very few surfaces are actually level and depending and, and you can get them and you can get it pretty close with the paper shims it just takes a few minutes time once you're set up they're good for that location now I want to show you how this is all put together I have a steel rod this happens to be an eighth inch rod and the rod right here and it is brought I ground it and filed it to a point let's see where to, there it is as you can see it just comes to a point now you can either use a grinding a grinding wheel on a machine or you can hand file it, it just takes longer. But if, in fact, I use a hand file to, to keep the point, I keep the point needle sharp. And it will wear in time, and then you can just dress it up with a file. And what you see down here are insulating. This is uh, dielectric. These, this, this is all PVC material that is glued, and it's to stop spark over because there's. A, the, I use the. I use this as a ground, as you can. I'll show you right on the bottom. I just take a, a wire with an alligator clip attached to it, and I just clip it on, and that goes. That's my grounding system. And then the rotating system itself. We'll move this out of the way and as you can see it's actually a uh, steel tube a quarter inch 
it is a quarter inch ID steel tubing. It's actually brake line. And I have a little brass bushing in here, eighth inch, and it fits real good. And then on the top of that, I have a set screw. And set screws, all set screws are, are very hard. They're, they're grade eight or better. And the neat thing is, on the very end of them, they got a little concave cup. And that's just perfect for sitting on the point. The point sits on the end of the set screw there, and then we have the bushing here. And this is the commutator. As you, This is just copper wire, bare copper wire that I've wound around until I was satisfied with the width. It's about a quarter. I've got to say it's a quarter inch. And uh, I put this... I was getting leak because I because I use a, a um, plastic cap and it had these lines and I was getting spark over so I sealed it up with these neoprene rings and then I used a nylon. I was really concerned with the with the, because believe it or not there's enough tension and you have to insulate the quarter inch tube. I have a nylon. These are, this is a clear. Uh, uh, it's a type of fuel line, actually, that's why it's yellow. But any, at any rate, it serves as a dielectric barrier because this is fairly small diameter and it's, you can really get, you can get a spark over. And then for my crossbar, I had these little plastic gizmos that I found. I really don't know what they were for, but that's what I'm using them for as a clamp. This is my ground. This is where I hook up my ground. And I can move this up and down if I want to. Just by, it all comes apart. You can pull that right apart and change the height. The only thing when you change the height, you gotta put different lengths. Like if you put this, if you, if you put this, uh, all you do is like switch the vinyl or the tubing. If you put it on top, then it'll raise it and put it on the bottom. And anyways, I've got it first set fairly low. Now, and this works fine, as you can see in the videos, in all my ion videos, ion thrusters, this is the one that I use, that you'll see. And it turns very good. Now, when you're setting up, the, the, the drawback here is that it's real tricky because of the instep uh, that I used to stop the spark over from the commutator. It, it's a little trick. It takes patience to set the gap up because I like to run as tight as I can to the commutator without touching it. That's, that's the tricky part. And uh, that's, that is, uh, but once you're set up, it works fine. And then uh, these are my power leads here. I have two of them because in this particular one, you really I only use one, but and I have this one capped out. But I have I have had in the past for uh, I use, I can install a, another commutator if I want, and uh, they 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 work fine. There's there's nothing wrong with them. And the only reason uh, I'm going to show you, I, I built another one. It's a little heavier. You see why you have to counterbalance. You see, because you're only using the eighth inch rod, even though it's straight, it doesn't take much when you're hanging out there 11 inches to, to tilt it. As you as you might want, as you might be able to see that you can tilt that pretty easy. So you have to counterbalance it, and and, and you should anyway, no matter. But, it, but that's that style. Now, I built a new one because I want to build heavier ion thrusters. So, I built this one. Now, this is different. I have a much larger commutator wheel, but it doesn't have the overlapping edges. It's just got, it's got the wire right on the end of the wheel commutator. This is my power lead going up to my uh, 
the power to the thruster. Now this is much heavier. This is a quarter inch rod. And as you can see, I've got the dielectrics. It's like a Labernathy seal. I got, and it spins very, it too is very easy to spin. And we still have a new level at the same way. This happens to be a wood base. And as you can see, this is my power in but it's much easier to set up. Once you set up, see, I can pull the... See, once you set the other one up, it's very hard to pull without messing up your setting. The, uh, the, the electrode to the, to the commutator, this one, you can just simply lift it right off. And this is a little bit different because it's, this is the ground. It's just a clamp that I use. And up here, I have a set screw with a point on the end that I use. I can adjust that. You can adjust the other one, too, a few turns. Anyways, now this is built different. This is a set screw with a point on the end. And I have at the, let me set that down. At the, I have at the very top of this one. I don't think you're going to see it. Yeah, maybe you can. But I... I counterboard it and and put a point or a, I took a punch and I got the very center so it sits down in a little well uh, a convex well and it works out very good and it's built the same way I've got a I've got a, a quarter inch brass bushing glued to the bottom of the this this is made out of 3 8 brake line tubing steel tubing and it's still and this is still my ground and you to ground the system I've done the same thing it's, it's a little different base but as you can see I can add a ground to these two screws holding holding a flange all I have to do is clip on and I'm good to go for earth ground now these are worked out pretty good as you can see I've got a very heavy much heavier crossbar and it's much sturdier I can put much more weight on it and how I add on to the, my boom length I can vary by just using different length quarter inch rods as you can see here I can just slide these in and I have a little set screw here and we're good to go and it gives me more flexibility on uh, how much boom I want to use. My boom, my boom length. And this has got, I've got a vinyl, vinyl nylon insulator over this. I glued this as all one unit, this entire thing. You can pull it apart, and, but this is pretty well fixed because I was so happy with having enough experience with it. I kind of know right where I want everything to be. So I, I don't have to put in so much flexibility. I make it more permanent. But as you can see, it spins just as easy as the other one, though it is heavier in weight. But, and I haven't really tried this yet, so I can't say it'll work, but I'm per, quite sure I won't have a problem because I'm using a much larger commutator in diameter. I don't think I'll have a danger of the spark over like I was, like I was getting to the ground and I may have to make an adjustment there because I have not put it on and haven't really tried it yet well all right I just thought to, I'd show you how I did all that if you plan on uh, building a rotating system for your and want to play with thrusters or whatever else you want to use it for but that that's the way it is talk to you later bye